now we have to talk about housing your chickens. Now not everyone wants to build a permanent structure and in some cases free ranging is not an option either. You may live on a smaller plot and you may have neighbors nearby that wouldn't appreciate chickens rooting through their gardens and scratching up their plants. One of the solutions for something like that is to build a portable chicken coop. This portable coop has an open floor and allows you to move the chickens to specific areas. It's complete with a nesting box and a place for the chickens to sleep at night. So let's go over some of the features of a portable coop. Keep in mind there's an infinite number of varieties that um, are available. You can buy them prefabricated through mail order or you can design and build your own like this one here was just of my own design and it's heavy enough to withstand heavy winds but light enough that you can actually move it around. Children, of course, wouldn't be able to move it by themselves, but a single adult could feasibly do it. When it comes to building your own portable chicken coop, try not to get too fancy. Keep it basic and keep it fairly lightweight. If you get carried away and build too many amenities onto the coop, you'll end up with something so heavy that you just can't move it around. It's a great way to till a garden as well, and I recommend a book that's called The Chicken Tractor, which talks about portable coops, portable pens, and using them to tend the soil that you're going to garden in later. Let's go over some of the features of this portable coop. Remember when you're designing your portable coop or even a permanent coop, make the dimensions suitable for an adult to access everything that you're going to have to do in the coop. If you make it too small, you'll be bent over all the time and you'll have to carry maybe a 50 pound bag of feed in to fill feeders and you'll also be hauling water in and out. So consider that when you're thinking about the dimensions of your coop. This particular one is six feet tall, it's seven feet long, and it's only three feet wide. I limited the width of the coop to three feet because the extensions of these middle bars are actually the handles that we use to lift it and roll it to a new location after every few days. The door is an easy screen door. You just turn the wood, pull it open, and then let's go over some of the features inside. Having a portable coop with an open bottom is so much better than just having a penned-in area that your chickens use each and every day. The portable coop will not allow the chickens to wear out the soil underneath or to eat all the grass and defoliate that area. Soil that's constantly tread upon by chickens and constantly contributed to with their waste material becomes toxic over time and you either have to rotate your chickens to a new paddock or make a new pen altogether. A portable chicken coop allows you to continually move your entire chicken coop, their nest box, and all their resources with them so you never wear out the soil and your chickens don't free range so they're not going to bother your neighbors or your pets and they also will be protected from things like stray dogs and cats as they grow. This coop is designed dimensionally really to accommodate only bantam chickens. Standard full-size chickens may need a larger habitat than this. So this one is for about five bantams, one rooster, and four hens. Now the portable coop like this, although it's completely enclosed except for the bottom so that your chickens can scratch the soil and eat bugs and eat greens, the enclosure does not really protect them from predators at night. Weasels and smaller predators could actually come through different openings in this. So just like a regular chicken coop, they need to have a secure location for the night. And this nest box area here, which is also their perch and roosting area, provides them protection through the night. So if a predator got through this screen or wire wall, or even came underneath the coop at night, your chickens will still be safe inside, and you should close it just as you would any other chicken coop to protect them. They have a ramp that goes all the way down, and it's secured at both ends to the coop itself so it doesn't rest on the ground, so when you move it, it all moves together. And your chickens can freely go in and out of this coop box during the day. When you're introducing your chickens to the coop that they're going to stay in, whether it's portable like this one or if it's a permanent coop, always start the chickens inside. Don't just turn them loose out here. Expect them to find the hole and consider this home. By starting them inside and keeping them inside overnight, then they know that this is their home. By suspending your feeder and drinker from a chain, you're also making sure that they hang level, no matter what the surface is that you're going to park your portable coop on. When the chickens go to bed at night, you want to elevate the feeder and keep it up and out of the way. So with the chain and a hook, all you have to do is pull the drinker and the feeder up and hook it in the overhead underneath the nest box. This way it's out of the way of predators, mice, and other things that will run around at night 
and try to take advantage of the feed that your chickens have and that they may spill on the ground. It's smart each day or every couple of days to move the portable coop to brand new soil so things don't have a chance to get rancid. As you can see the side on this portable coop is hinged so that it can be swung open and you'll have access as a coop tender to the inside of this nesting box which is also where the chickens roost at night. Now when you're having a, a box like this you need to think about it in terms of how are you going to clean it later. So make sure that perches, and in this case the perches are just set in place, make sure that they're removable so that you can clean out the substrate here. I like to litter raise my chickens so there is no droppings pit. We just put wood shavings in and let it stay there until it mixes up with the chicken waste. Then of course we put that in the garden. So you can see also that there's a nest box inside and this is sized for a bantam. This next box is 12 inches by 12 inches by 14 inches high. And it has a slanted roof so you could also take it out, put it on the grass and leave it outside if the weather's warm. And this is the inside view showing the pop hole for the chicken. Now let's say you want to provide some additional perches inside your portable coop during the day and you want to make it easy to pull them out when you're going to service the coop. All you have to do is take pieces of 1x2 wood, round off the top so that it's nice for perching on for the bird's feet, and because it's also 1x2 cage wire here, we just slide it through the openings. And because this coop is 3 feet wide, we only have to make the perches 4 feet wide. Bits of the perch stick out on either side, and then you just take a regular spike that you can get at the hardware store and slide it through a hole that you drill, and that will keep it from pulling through and falling down on the birds when they're inside. Then when you need to service the coop, you just pull the spikes out, which are all the perch, and now you have free access. Plus, you can clean and sanitize these perches when you're doing the rest of the coop. And when the removable perches are not being used, I simply store them in the overhead on the coop itself and that keeps them with me. Anytime I want to change them and move them back down, I just pull them out, drop the spikes in, and set them at whatever height I feel is necessary for the birds that are staying in the coop. Now these wheels are located at just one end of the coop, so we lift the whole thing up and move it like a wheelbarrow. My personal preference is not to use pneumatic or airfield tires, but rather use the solid rubber tires. Inevitably, when you go to use airfield tires, one will be flat, and then you've got a problem. So these are solid rubber tires, and they're just run through 2x4s that extend the entire length of the chicken coop. The 2x4s, again, are 8 feet long at the bottom, but the coop itself is only 7 feet long, 3 feet wide, and 6 feet tall. The chicken access ramp to the door is secured with nails and glue at the top, and then we follow it all the way down. It goes to the lead board, which is also the bottom of the doorway that people walk through. So no part of it rests on the ground. And this is how the portable coop looks from the end where the wheels are located. You can see that we have a window at the top of this three foot by three foot by three foot box. And also you can see how the roof looks. It's three eighths inch thick material and it's arched four feet by eight feet long and it just covers the coop from one end to the other and the rest is 2 by 4 material and then 1 by 10s at each end which gives it some kind of structural support. The entire thing is finished with exterior wood stain. Before we talk about the design elements of a chicken coop, let's talk about where you're going to locate it. Putting a chicken coop, for example, right next to the woods or in a heavily wooded or treed area like this is pretty much a bad idea. So if you had the option of putting it out in the open, I recommend that. Predators inhabit the woods and hunt the perimeter of the woods frequently. So if you put a chicken coop there, you're actually ringing the dinner bell for wildlife. This is an example of a desirable location for your chicken coop. Notice that the ground slopes, that it's high on the right and low on the left. This is critical if we're thinking about areas where rain may pool or stand. We want the area that your coop is built upon to be dry and for water to run through and dry off quickly after a heavy rain. Ventilation in a chicken coop is critical, and air movement on some of the hottest portions of the summer 
may not be enough to keep your birds cool. Here's an example of how I've attached solar powered exhaust vents to the top of a chicken coop. You want to ventilate the coop, but you want to keep it draft free. Heavy drafts in a coop during winter would be a huge detriment to your birds. One of the first considerations when you're thinking about building your own chicken coop is the physical size. This coop we're looking at now is 8 feet by 8 feet, which provides 64 square feet of floor space for the chickens. The general rule of thumb is that you need 4 square feet per bird. So this coop is suitable for 16 full-grown standard chickens. Even though it's a free-range situation, which may allow some people to have more birds in a smaller habitat, I have to consider the winter weather and the fact that these birds will be inside for large sections of the year. So when you're planning the size of your coop, make sure you understand how many hens or roosters you're going to be keeping in the future and make it large enough to accommodate them comfortably. When birds are concentrated in great numbers in a small space, they suffer stress, they may get sick early, and may even attack one another and pull each other's feathers out. That's something we want to avoid. You also may notice that each of my chicken coops are elevated well off the ground. This prevents mice and other vermin from taking up residence underneath the coops. It also provides a place for the chickens to dash under if there were a hawk, for example, or a sudden rainstorm. In the middle of the summer, they can also find shade underneath. Keep in mind that you need to be able to reach under there and possibly retrieve a dead bird or a sick bird. Notice also that there's a concrete pad in front of the doorway. Places that you're going to step often will become a muddy mess, for example, in the spring. So take into consideration the weather conditions in your area and high traffic areas should have some protection, otherwise you'll just have a big muddy mess. One of the reasons that you have a chicken coop is to provide physical security. Aside from giving the chickens shelter from the weather, from the cold, and from the wind, you need to have strong doors that secure with latches. This prevents entry by predators like raccoons or possums or weasels. So think in terms of what may be trying to get into the coop at night when the doors are closed. The chickens return on their own to the chicken coop and don't require any guidance for that. Each coop will also need a door that people can go in and out of. Make sure the door is big enough that it's comfortable for you. You'll be carrying things in and out and you don't want to be bent over. Windows are another essential part of the chicken coop. They need light from the outside to help stimulate them so that they'll lay eggs. A chicken needs roughly 14 hours of daylight to lay eggs. Now here we have the interior of the small 8 foot by 8 foot coop. Remember that it accommodates 16 chickens. You'll notice that the floor is covered with pine shavings. This is what's called litter raised. The pine shavings serve a number of purposes. One, they absorb the moisture from the waste material that the chickens generate. And number two, it serves us well in the garden as a mulch or an amendment to the soil. You want to keep your substrate thick on the floor so that when chickens are jumping down from their high perches, especially the heavier birds, they won't injure their feet when they drop down onto the floor. Every chicken coop needs to be self-contained for the birds. That includes fresh water and a place to feed and nest boxes. This particular drinker holds five gallons of water. Now even if the chickens don't use it up, it's critical that you change the water at least every other day. Clean out the drinker and fill it with fresh water, even if they don't use it up. You'll notice that I have cage wire circling the top of it. This prevents chickens from sitting on top and soiling the water itself. It's easy to just slide off, change the water. The other thing is that the base here is not just ornamental, it has a heating element in it and it's on a thermostat so when the weather gets really cold it prevents the drinking water from freezing for the birds. So it heats up automatically and keeps it at a temperature above freezing so the birds can drink. Birds don't do well drinking really cold water, especially when the weather's cold as it gets here in the teens. Every chicken coop, aside from having food and water, requires nesting material and nest boxes for them to lay their eggs in. You need one nest box for every four hens. The next boxes should be low enough for your chickens to get up to them easily, but not so low that while walking around they look in and see that there are eggs there. In some cases, this may start the chickens out of boredom to eat the eggs in the box. So I keep them elevated above eye level of the birds. Now one of the ways I get the chickens to lay their eggs in the box itself rather than just dropping them around on the floor is I put a decoy egg in. 
Now decoy eggs come made out of a lot of different things. You can have them made out of concrete, stone, ceramics, and in this case, wood. The wooden egg I found has a weight and a sensation most similar to the actual egg itself. If you put in a stone egg, for example, in the dead of winter, the stone gets so cold that it's uncomfortable for the chicken to set on. So by putting a wooden egg in, the chicken comes by and sees it in the nest and assumes that it is a real egg, and then she feels that it's safe to lay her own eggs next to it. If every egg disappeared each time you collect it from the boxes, the chickens would think that they're being destroyed and would just search out another place in which to lay. Now these are wooden decoy eggs in place in the nesting box. Remember, it's important that you put something like diatomaceous earth in with a litter in the box to protect your chickens from parasites while they sit. Each coop, as I mentioned before, needs to have its own feed bin. This large metal bin, for example, will hold 100 pounds of feed. I usually only pour in 50 pounds at a time, and the trough is wide enough to allow several chickens to eat together. If you make a small eating area, then some of the larger or more dominant chickens can actually keep others off the feed. Now this coop is much larger. It's 8 feet by 16 feet and therefore it can hold 32 chickens. Now again it has a latching door, it has windows that open so that we can have ventilation on a hot day, and it has a door suitable for people at one end. It's also elevated off the ground as I said before to prevent vermin from setting up housekeeping and also to allow chickens some safe haven during the day. Now one of the traits that I'd like you to notice about this particular coop, it's nice and long and notice that we've put the hen access door or the pop hole at this end of the coop and we've put the nest boxes at the far end. That's intentional. We want each chicken to spend as much time walking across the dry litter on their way to the nest box as possible this way, their feet are nice, clean, and dry by the time they get into the nest box, and they won't be soiling their eggs. This coop also has a large metal feeder that can hold a couple hundred pounds of feed, and it has long perches that are nice and low to the ground. This is a good design for very heavy birds, and originally I had cochins in this coop. One of the problems with this chicken coop is it's only four feet tall at the back, and it's six feet tall at the front, which means that when you're servicing the coop, you're bent over all the time. That's not a good thing and I wouldn't repeat this design simply because of the low ceiling. There are some other things to think about when you're building your chicken coop. Make sure that the walls are sealed and airtight and prevent drafts. You need to have a soffit region that allows air to flow or the air inside will get stale rather than be dry. Chicken health is really the most important thing here and as long as they're out of a draft They'll be okay even on the coldest days unless you have a breed of bird that really can't tolerate cold temperatures and then you should pick your breed according to that. I don't put double walls up in my coops. I leave them open and just the exterior sheathing is here because I find that having a double wall just provides an area for mice and other vermin to build nests and I wouldn't even know about it because those would become inaccessible areas. I don't put insulation on the walls either because chickens eat insulation. You may notice that the overhead here has regular household insulation and the areas where the chickens may be able to reach when they're on their perch, I have metal flashing up here and that prevents them from picking at and from eating the fiberglass insulation. So by insulating the ceiling, we cut down on some of the noise that comes from the coop as well and it insulates them from the high heat in the summer and then again from the cold in the winter that's generated through the roof. Another thing I'd like you to notice is that I've put in lights in my chicken coops. There are two sources of lighting here as all my chickens are wired with electricity. One is a light that's on a timer and it's fluorescent. It's a fluorescent light that's designed to be outside. Some fluorescent bulbs won't even activate if it's below freezing. Being on the timer allows me to make sure that these lights come on and give my chickens 14 hours of daylight a day. If you want your chickens to lay eggs throughout the year, you're going to have to have lights on a timer because as the days shorten, it's natural for the chicken to go off laying and do nothing basically as far as egg production goes throughout the year and they'll be eating your feed and producing nothing in return. So by putting artificial lighting in the coop, and the bulb doesn't have to be bright, this particular one only uses 15 watts and as a fluorescent it generates much more light than a normal 15 watt incandescent bulb would. 
This keeps the birds on a stable cycle of light and dark, and I'm assured that I'll get eggs throughout the year. Another thing I'd like to point out about a chicken coop feature is that you need to have a pop hole for your hen door that can latch well. Raccoons and things like that will fiddle with latches and opening devices, so you need to make sure that it's nice and secure. Now in the mornings when you're opening up your hen door, there should be another receiver for the latch in the open position. This makes sure that wind doesn't come along and slam the door shut during the day when you aren't here and then the chickens may or may not have access to water or food unless you provide that outside the coop. So make sure you have a latch to hold it shut and another latch to hold it open that can't be blown closed by the wind. Now the coop behind me accommodates 40 full-size standard birds. It's 8 feet wide and it's 20 feet long. So that gives adequate floor space at 4 square feet per bird throughout the year for 40. Again, even though they free range, we want to make sure and provide plenty of adequate space inside, which reduces stress on the birds. Now you notice that I have a little variation on this particular hen door and how it gets locked open. All I do is drop a spike through the rain shield here. Once the door is in the open position, you drop it down and it keeps the wind from blowing it shut during the day. So really it can be as basic as you want it to be, so long as it serves the same purpose. And we have another locking device here that latches. And if I want to give it extra security, I just slide a nail through here. You can even put a padlock on latches like this if you feel that's necessary. Now notice on the ramps you have a lot of different options also. The only thing you have to do is provide something secure enough that the chickens can go up and down the ramp without sliding or hurting themselves. In this case, all I've done is cut up sections of an old garden hose and screw them with stainless steel screws to a wooden plank. And this is the best one that I have as far as the chickens go and it works out very well. Now when it comes to the interior finishing of your chicken coops, remember it's all for the birds. So anything that you can put in here that makes it more interesting or entertaining for them, I recommend that you do it. Keep things off the floor as much as possible so you have access when it comes time to clean. You can see that I have a 12 foot long maple branch here suspended from the ceiling. The chickens like to perch on this and I like to think that it gives some of the same motion that a tree branch in the wind would give. The birds all line up on it and as another one jumps then it moves it again and they all end up swinging and holding their balance. I think it provides interesting exercise and the chickens seem to really enjoy it. I recommend that you set up a number of perches at various heights throughout the coop so that the birds can pick their own comfort zone. Some of my chickens like to jump and sit right in the windows. Others fly all the way to the top, which is eight feet, and they nest in the rafters at night. Remember that this coop has a capacity for 40 birds. So it has 10 nest boxes, one for every four hens. And the nest boxes are high enough off the ground again, remember to keep them out of normal line of sight of the birds just roaming through the coop, but yet, not so high that the birds can't easily fly to the lower perches and then up to the next one so that they can access the box that they want. Each hen you'll find out picks a favorite box and they use it over and over. Now if you're going to store feed inside your chicken coop, and I do because I don't like to haul 50 pound bags every day, if you're going to store it inside the coop make sure you use a metal bin, not plastic and not wood. If rodents were to gain access to your coop they could easily chew through a plastic bin. Now another thing you may consider having inside the coop is a caged area that's mounted to the wall that's off the floor so it's not occupying valuable floor space in the coop. But where you could take a bird that was injured for example and keeping it in the company of the other chickens in line of sight, you can still set it aside in a cage like this and protect it from the other birds. And it's a convenient place because it's out of the weather and you can provide separate food and water. In this case right now I have guinea keats in here as we raise lavender and pearl guineas as well.